we're going to do fruit bread and butter pudding. A uh, slight slant on the old favourite, um, but oh my god, it's so good to taste. Really, really simple and really fast, and probably use up most of the stuff you've already got in your kitchen. I've got some papaya and mango because it's the local fruit and it's just coming out of season, so uh, I've been jamming most of it. So we're lucky to have this bit left over. And I've mixed up the papaya and the mango with uh, some great, freshly grated ginger, which just adds a really nice zing to it. So just chop the fruit up, fresh fruit, anything will do, bananas, apples, anything you've got hold of, just dice it up really good. And add a couple of tablespoons of sugar. That will help solidify it slightly because what starts at the bottom is going to end up on the top. Using a Pyrex dish, we can only get square ones over here and I think the round ones that you can get, the bowls that you can get in the UK would look so good because at the end of the day you cook it with the fruit up at the bottom but when it's cooked and it starts cooling down, you tip it the other way around and it ends up with the fruit cascading down the bread and butter pudding part. It looks so great. Anyway, diversing. Mix all the sugar in with the fruit and just put it on the side. Make sure you've got your oven on because as soon as you've mixed everything, you really want to stick it straight in there. Um, I'm cheating, I'm not making fresh bread. Um, Freddie's just popped ashore and we've got a couple of um, things that look something similar to bread. Um, but we're going to go for it. It's, uh, it's wholemeal because there was no white bread left over and I really prefer white bread. I know in this day and age, it's supposed to be unhealthy to have white bread, but hey, if you like something, if you're not eating it all the time, it's going to be okay. So I'm just breaking off little bits because it just makes it easier to mix. And I suppose I've got two torpedo type rolls here. That should be enough for this sort of size dish. Normally it'll be about four or five slices of your ordinary sliced bread out of the supermarket. Um, if you're making your own, that's so much better. You know what's gone into it. So, it's crumbling away. This is probably the most labour intensive part of all of this. Anyway, we're anchored, let me tell you where we are. We're anchored um, in Beckway, which is a beautiful, beautiful island in St Vincent and the Grenadines. It's about ooh, seven, eight hours good sailing from Kariaku. Um, unfortunately we had a sort of northerly wind the whole way which meant it was like going backwards on sand really, um, tacking a lot to get in here so it wasn't that enjoyable. I always like to go where I'm aiming for if you know what I mean. Right, uh, bread's all in the bowl, add milk until it's about halfway up, there we go. So it's nice and sloshy using the technical term and then just pat it in with a fork. You don't want it so that the bread is dry anymore basically and you want it into a sort of sloshy consistency. <laughs> a sloshy consistency. A bit more milk. <laughs> sloshy consistency. I'm sure one of these celebrity chefs has got something really clever to say about consistency, verbs. Maybe that's something we can play with. What verbs would you use for different types of consistency? Well, with batter for pancakes, it's always a wallpaper paste type consistency. So I'll have to come up with an analogy for bread and butter pudding consistency. Um, but we'll stick today with sloshy. So it is really quite sloshy. Then I'm going to add... <laughs> I'm going to add the eggs really unprofessionally because plastic bowls are not great for breaking eggs. Not that I've mastered the one-handed break, I suppose that's another thing we could work on. Um, but hey, when somebody's eating this pudding, do they really care how I break an egg to get it in there? I don't think so. I think yeah, I'm throwing eggshells to meet Mother Nature in the sea. <laughs> I think one missed and has actually landed on the deck, so hey, we'll pick that up next time we go sailing. So, Popping all the eggs into the slushy consistency, make sure it's really well mixed. 
might want to practice your heating technique now. And after seven years of not having any operation, electronically operated gadgets in the uh, kitchen, got a strong right arm. So, actually I've got a really great gizmo, I'll show you. Found it in one of these tiny little shops on an island somewhere. And I'm sure my mum used to have one of these when I was little. And it's brilliant because it's still going poop, 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 poop. I just go, ooh, and then I can sort of do whatever else. Wonderful. Right, sorry, dressing again. Anyway, that's where we are. That's the sort of consistency you're looking at, you can see. Please note, new camera, new computer, because the last one got buried at sea. So, back to the Pyrex dish with the fruit at the bottom. Oh, do you know what? I'm going to add some sultanas and raisins to this. Just a handful. Or maybe a bit more. Export in and then just pour it over the fruit. Settle on the top. Don't worry if the fruit starts juicy, start seeping up the side. You're going to end up cutting with some slices, so the slice will show the bread and butter pretty part and the fruit can over the top. So, this is what it looks like. As you can see bread and butter pudding on top, fruit at the bottom, bung it straight in the oven. Now, this isn't a quick cook, it's a quick prepare but it's not a quick cook, so leave it at least half an hour before you peek through that oven window, or like my oven window is non-existent, you have to have a quick not to let too much air in, um, to see if it's starting to rise, the eggs are starting to rise on that bread and butter pudding. As soon as it starts rising and bubbling and the fruit's all bubbled and boiled, then it should be ready to take out. Allow it to cool down for 10 minutes or so, prying the edges away from the bowl, and then it'd be ready to put the plate on top of the bowl, spliff it over and uh, leave it to get really quite cool. Um, you can have it hot, I suppose, um, in the Caribbean. You don't really want things hot, trust me. Make up some rum cream as well and have a little dollop of rum cream to a slice of the fruit and bread and butter pudding. Enjoy um, and I'll see you again next time.